Hi, this is Shivara Jaya from VitalCoaching.com and we are talking about vital sex and the topic for this video is what makes sex sacred? Sex, like any other form of action or mindsets in life, can be sacred or not. Sex by itself is not necessarily sacred, or you can say that everything is sacred, but sometimes we're aware of the fact that it's sacred or not. I mean, those are, you know, mental concepts, so they are just an approximation of something that is way more complex and way more perfect than what I'm saying right now. So I'm going to give you some ideas or ways of looking at it that might be helpful to you. So in my opinion, what makes it sacred is the fact that you are engaging from a place where you're consciously inviting the invisible into uh, the practice. So when we focus on vital sex, the fact that I'm consciously calling upon forces that are much vaster than myself, you know, it can be gods and goddesses, it can be uh, angelic powers, it can be in the, even the invisible, just the spirit or the universe or the cosmos or the planet or nature or humankind. You know, all that means that I'm invoking energies to come and sponsor this moment. It's like picking up the phone and being, hey God, we need you here. You know, literally it's like, because I'm setting up the space, I'm saying this is dedicated to something which is much vaster than, than, than myself. So, for instance, if you take the difference between being in an office or being in a church, why is it that being in an office is usually not considered as sacred and being in a church is considered as sacred? It's because of the intention there. In an office, you are creating something, creating something which is physical, you know, based on something that is more on the physical realms, on the physical world. Very often the intention is money. It means that it's just a survival thing to make money and uh, be able to survive on, on, on this planet. So, you know, summarize, of course, it's creative space, creative power and all that. It's, it's something that is generating our culture as well. Uh, but why is it that in an office it's not secret and then when you are in a church or when you are in a mosque or you are somewhere else, it's, you are going to have a dimension of, uh, of uh, sacredness. It's really because that the idea of power or invisible forces out there that are much vaster than us as human beings is present. It is part of the setup. The temple is dedicated to the Christ, to God, to, uh, to Allah, to, uh, you know, to the Buddha. There is always like an intelligence which is out there that we want to bring into, into the picture. And this is usually what makes it sacred. Now, of course, you know, within the New Age movement and when we think about spirit, being spiritual or not, very often some people will be connected with the dimension of sacredness, even if they are not consciously invoking these uh, dimensions which are much, much more powerful. But simply having some, some mandalas or some sacred images or even a few words, you know, I love everybody, you put that on your wall, that's it, you created sacredness. In, because you created an intention which is connected with a field of energy which is planetary field which is an intention an evolutionary intention for the planet and humankind so by simply doing that you're already invoking or using the space in a conscious way and that this is creating uh, creating sacredness so I'm not sure how you remember your first sexual experiences, but imagine that you are, um, you know, a young adult and you're engaging to the, the, into your sexual practices. Uh, in the beginning, it might feel like there is something missing there, that even though you're connecting with your partner, there is something that is not as complete as you would like it to be. You feel a sense of not, uh, uh, not enough uh, emotional connection or energetic connection. You might feel a little bit of uh, sexual gratification, so there might be physical pleasure, but you have the feeling that something is missing there. So the moment you start adding a dimension of sacredness within the tantric sex practices or vital sex practices, suddenly it completes the picture. Suddenly you create a unified field of energy and that, uh, you know, completes the sphere of your uh, sexual, spiritual experience. So, to add this dimension of, uh, of sacredness, of course, you can add mantras. I talked about this in another, another, another video. Um, but understanding, you know, this, this principle or this distinction is quite, 
quite important in my eyes so that you understand really what what you are doing um, the idea of dedication or the idea of um, of invoking the the invisible forces is really what is what is at play i want to make another distinction it is that um, sacred or not doesn't have to do with the style that you're using you know for instance you can engage into uh, sex in a way that is extremely passionate extremely fiery with lots of intensity and this still have a space which is extremely secret you know it's a different type of fire like exactly when you are uh, singing uh, in a spiritual practice sometimes the, the, the singing will be extremely internal and sometimes it's going to be an outward flow of, uh, of energy with lots of passion and lots of joy which is expressed externally with sometimes very loud music so that can be still secret it's not in the form okay it's not because you go slow that it's going to be secret or because you go fast that it's going to be not secret it's not about the forms it's really about the intention and what you're putting in it i'll be back soon have fun bye bye